Aircraft carriers are basically floating runways at sea. These carriers help aircraft land and take off right from the flight deck. However, with a limited amount of space on the flight deck, not every aircraft can operate on a carrier. Larger aircraft typically require longer runways to land successfully. But one event proved us all wrong. The C-130 Hercules is one of the most important aircraft in history. Since its first flight in 1954, the aircraft has been everywhere and done everything. Air crews have flown it to both poles, landed or airdropped military supplies to hotspots such as Vietnam, and performed countless relief operations around the world. The Hercules has been in service with the U.S. Air Force for more than half a century, and given the sheer size of this aircraft, it's been used for various operations. So landing such a large aircraft on a carrier would seem impossible, right? Well, it isn't quite impossible, since the C-130 landed on a carrier in 1963. A four-engine C-130 with a bulky fuselage and 132-foot wingspan managed to touch down on an aircraft carrier around 500 miles out in the North Atlantic off the coast of Boston. As the C-130 accomplished the landing, it became the largest and heaviest aircraft to land on an aircraft carrier, a record that still stands today. The Hercules was considered to become a super cod or carrier onboard delivery aircraft, a job that belonged to the Grumman C-1 trader. However, given that the C-1 was a small twin-engine aircraft with 300 miles range, it became a problem for delivering emergency items to a carrier operating in the middle of the ocean. The Hercules was stable, reliable, and capable of delivering large payloads over a much longer distance. So the C-130 was sent to land on a carrier. And by the end of October 1963, the aircraft performed 29 touch-and-go landings, 21 unarrested full-stop landings, and 21 unassisted takeoffs at 85,000 pounds, up to 121,000 pounds. The C-130 managed to smash that like button if you haven't done so already. But no, the aircraft managed to land without a tail hook and without the help of the arresting gear. It also managed to take off from the carrier without the need for a catapult. The C-130 Hercules is one of the most versatile aircraft ever produced. It's been around for a long time, and there are currently over 2,400 C-130s across more than 60 nations with over 40 different variations. It was designed to transport troops and equipment in the combat zone via airdrop or short runways. It can be rapidly configured for various types of cargo, such as palletized equipment, floor-loaded material, and airdrop platforms. The original C-130 cruised at 336 miles per hour at 20,000 feet, but the newest model, the C-130J-30 Super Hercules, is capable of cruising around 400 miles per hour at 20,000 feet. Some of the versions of the C-130 that the U.S. Air Force currently uses are the C-130E, C-130J, and C-130J-30.
Due to its constant state of innovation, the C-130 is ready to tackle any mission, no matter the location or difficulty. The aircraft continues to be the standard for tactical airlift needs, which is no wonder why the aircraft was used for missions on aircraft carriers. While the C-130 landed and took off from a carrier without help, most aircraft typically need additional support to accomplish a successful landing and take off from a carrier. Most aircraft operating on a carrier need to be boosted off by the catapult for the aircraft to reach the desired speed to take off from the limited runway. These catapult systems help the aircraft to gain speed quickly and shoot up in the sky. Due to the limited amount of runway, the aircraft don't have the needed space as they would on the ground. If there were no catapults, most aircraft would likely end up in the water as they're trying to take off. When it comes to landing, each aircraft requires a different technique. If we're talking about a helicopter capable of vertical landing, then there's no need for help. But for larger aircraft such as fighter jets, help is a must. When such planes land on a carrier, an arresting gear is placed along the carrier's flight deck. This arresting gear consists of a few wires placed across the flight deck that help the aircraft to come to a full stop. As the aircraft is preparing for a landing, the pilot aims to grab one of the wires with its tail hook, and if it's done right, the aircraft stops. This is further considered a successful aircraft carrier landing. Interestingly, in larger aircraft landing on carriers, the need for any type of help isn't always required, which was the case for the C-130. But while the C-130 was the largest aircraft to ever land on a carrier, it wasn't the only large plane to accomplish this. The U-2 spy plane has also landed and operated on an aircraft carrier. Landing a U-2 plane on a conventional airstrip is often considered to be the most difficult job in aviation. So landing it on a carrier would be almost impossible, but it has been done before. Due to the high altitudes the plane flies at and the partially pressurized cabin, pilots are required to smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. But no, in all seriousness, they're required to wear pressure suits while flying it. To make things even more challenging for the pilot when landing the aircraft, the bottom of the front canopy has been known to fog up on humid days, further limiting visibility. This makes it extremely difficult for pilots to operate this aircraft. So how did the U-2 end up operating on a carrier? In 1963, the CIA initiated Project Whale Tail. The goal of this project was to adapt the U-2 for carrier operations. They made the U-2 capable of taking off unassisted from a carrier when there was a high wind over deck factor. Its slow approach speed made arresting landings easier. The U-2 spy plane managed to successfully land and take off from the aircraft carrier and further present as an example that larger aircraft could potentially be deployed to carriers and operate safely. Bye for now.